Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanna tell you the five myths of becoming a full-time landscape photographer coming up. So in this video, we're talking the five myths of becoming a full-time landscape photographer. I'm sure there are more, but these are like the most common questions I get asked about being a full-time landscape photographer and people coming to me and being like, how can I do what you do? How can I be a full-time landscape photographer and do what I love for a living? I think that's awesome. If that's where your mind is starting and you want to do something that you truly love and are passionate about, I think you should go for it 110%. It's what I did. It was really, really hard getting to this point, and it's still really, really hard getting to the point where I want to be, because I don't think I'm there or even close yet. But the number one biggest myth that I always hear people tell me is like, it's so cool you get to go out and shoot photographs every single day. Simply not true. Like when people become full-time photographers, even landscape photographers, they're shocked by how much time they spend on other things beside taking photos. So this is like the business side of it, doing taxes, talking with clients. So many things go into running your own business and being like a contractor full time and freelancing your work to people as much as possible. And being an entrepreneur and everything that surrounds that, marketing, social media management, emails, that you don't get to spend as much time as you think when you go out and, and you shoot. And it's not saying like I shoot more or less. I probably shoot a little bit more than I did when I was still working a day job and doing landscape photography on the side. But the fact that people think that you get to shoot like every single day, every sunrise, every sunset, simply not true. And, and that's one of the biggest myths to this is that it's still shooting the actual art that is photography and going out in the field and shooting those photos will still be your second job. The business side of it is your full-time job. Number two is like you never burn out. And people are always saying to me like, it's so cool you get to do what you do. And that's 100% the truth. But then the second part of that statement is you probably love photography even more than you used to. And sadly, that's not true because I suffer more burnout being a full-time landscape photographer than I did when I was just doing it for fun or on the side because when you're doing it for a job, you have to remember typically you're producing content for clients or typically you're going out and, and filming a YouTube video for a lot of people and all the work that goes into that and you're meeting deadlines and you're fighting to you know continue to have income month to month because you're an entrepreneur and you're doing this as your business. So you really have to think about like the joy that goes into it. And if you're just going out and shooting for fun, which I typically try to do like once a month with no cameras or anything around me, those are the most fun times. And it gets me back to when I was still doing it just for fun or on the side or just doing it for my own enjoyment. Typically I burn out way more and have to fight through that process way more being full time. And it's just something that people don't really think about of like, yes, you burn out and you also have to fight through that and power through the burnout. So that's another myth to this being a full time photographer. Number three, people always say it's so awesome that you're sponsored and you get all this free stuff in the mail. Not true. I buy all of my photography equipment and the stuff that is sent to me to try out or test out, I usually have to return about a month later. So thinking that you're gonna go full time and get a sponsorship and get all this free gear, simply another myth. Now, it's not a bad thing. It lets me continue to be 100% unbiased on the things that I'm purchasing because I'm not being told by a company of what to say about their products. 
I try to give 100% unbiased views and reviews on everything that I show you on this channel. But the thought process that comes with being like full time, especially if something like in the YouTube realm or if you're writing articles, something like that, is that you do get sponsored and you do get tons of this free stuff. I mean, I've gotten like camera bags and stuff for free just to try out and review, but that doesn't mean I'm sponsored by any means. I still have to pay for the bags if I want a new one that they come out with unless they send me another one to review. And like I said, typically I do have to return a lot of that gear. So don't go into this process thinking, I'm gonna get sponsored and like all this free stuff, I can just write off all my photography equipment expenses because those aren't gonna come in. That's not true. Number four is, oh man, you probably travel constantly and love it so much. And the fact is I do typically travel once a month get out into the field and get into a new location, but love it so much. I mean, there's some give and take to that. I see a lot of photographers who travel a lot and I really struggle with the fact of like, what's the balance of life and family life and travel and photography. And it's really difficult. It's probably the most difficult thing about landscape photography for me is taking these trips and going places by myself because typically I'm out in the field alone. I have my own schedule I have to keep. I have to get the shots. I, I have to meet these deadlines. And I go out into the field alone to get everything done and get all of this work completed. And I don't get to enjoy family time. If I do go somewhere like with my wife or with you know, my family, my brother, somewhere like that. I don't get to spend typically as much time as I would want to just completely immerse in that vacation. I'm constantly thinking about like, what photo could I get in this location to meet this deadline or, or meet what I'm doing here. So I constantly have to do a self check and think about, okay, is this a vacation that I'm gonna take with my family and completely write off photography here and force myself just to spend time with them? or is this something that I'm gonna have to travel to go do? Typically, it's something that I have to travel to go to and go by myself, and you know, that does get really lonely. There's no lying about that. And it's really a struggle for me and my personality type and you know, my goals in life beyond photography of taking those trips and really diving into them and enjoying everything that's going on without knowing that I'm missing something going on back home. And number five is what I hear all the time. It's what I heard from some of my closest friends, some of the people I trusted the most, and that's, you can't make any money doing that. Simply not true. The phrase starving artist like doesn't even exist anymore. You have to understand if, if landscape photography is something that you really want to do full time with your life, we live in such an age, the most exciting age for entrepreneurs right now. It's cool to be an entrepreneur right now. We live in a time where the internet makes everything available to you. So going into it thinking, well, I can't make any money doing this, or you know, I can only sell prints in this, I can only do workshops here. I, I wanna tell you right now that's simply not true and it's not factual because there are so many opportunities with the internet and things that you can do problem solving wise of if you're struggling to make money, switch and go this way. You don't have to do what every other landscape photographer is doing. Me, I don't even do workshops. So like a lot of photographers make money doing that. I typically don't like it and don't enjoy everything that goes around it. So I don't like schedule my own workshops and do all that stuff and get people to sign up and all that. I typically go a different route and make money writing articles, making videos for people, doing things like that. And basically having online video be the main idea of my business model and having several outlets that go around that business model to help me bring in income with landscape photography. And yes, some months are more sparse than others in income, but that's just because that month I probably worked on several projects at once and the next month is going to be my big income month. So you constantly have to think about what is the internet offering me right now? What can I do to make money with it? And that's not a bad thing, by the way. And then taking advantage of that opportunity and really diving into it and figuring out, number one, 
how can this help the people who follow me? And number two, how can I make an income doing it? And number three, how can I continue to love photography while doing this task? So I think that just about covers it. This is like my encouragement and information and advice to you. If you're interested in landscape photography, you want to do it full time, no, it's going to be hard going into it. No, it might not turn out the way you want it to, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It could just mean you wind up doing it in a different way than you envisioned it from the start. So if you're interested in landscape photography, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Hey, if you want advice on becoming a full-time landscape photographer, leave a comment below in the comment section and I'll reply to those too.